Hello and welcome. My name is Bryant Lin. I'm one of the co-directors of the Center for Asian Health Research and Education at Stanford. Welcome to our monthly community health talks brought to you by our center as well as the Stanford Health Library. Great thanks for the support of the Vincent Wu Foundation for underwriting this series. Uh, today we have a fantastic talk for you about lung cancer in non-smoking Asian American and Pacific Islander females. Scarlett Gomez, Dr. Scarlett Gomez and Dr. Iona Cheng will review what we currently know about lung cancer in non-smoking Asian American and Pacific Islander females and ongoing research in this area. Dr. Gomez is, is an epidemiologist with research interests in the role of social determinants of health, including race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, gender, immigration status, sociocultural factors, and neighborhood contextual characteristics on health outcomes. She is a professor in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics, co-leader of the Cancer Control Program of the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center and the director of the Greater Bay Area Cancer Registry, a part of the California Cancer Registry and the NCI Surveillance Epidemiology End Results SEER program. Dr. Cheng, professor, Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at UCSF. Uh, Dr. Cheng is a cancer epidemiologist with a research program centered on understanding the role of genetics, health behaviors, as well as neighborhood and environmental factors in relation to cancer risk. She is a professor and chief of the Cancer Epidemiology Division in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at the University of California, San Francisco. She is also co-investigator of the SEER Greater Bay Area Cancer Registry. We are also joined by Dr. Heather Wakeley, who will be answering questions during the Q&A period. Dr. Wakeley is the clinical clinic is the chief of the Division of Oncology at Stanford and Def Deputy Chair of the Cancer Institute at Stanford. So welcome Dr. Gomez, Dr. Cheng, and Dr. Wakeley. Um, please take it away. Thank you so much um, to the, uh, the care for hosting us um, here today. We're um, so pleased to see such a great turnout. And um, this is actually a topic that's actually very close and near and dear to our hearts um, as we have close friends and family and certainly patients who've been um, affected by this deadly disease. Um, and we will be sharing with you some of what we currently know and mostly what we don't know and um, hopefully be able to share with you also the current research that we're um, the three of us are doing to try to address this problem. Why do we care about lung cancer among Asian American females? In fact, we know from descriptive mortality data that lung cancer is a leading cause of mortality among Asian American populations. You can see from this table that was published by colleagues, um, including those at Stanford, that showing, focusing on the bottom pa panel of the graph here, that for these Asian American groups that are shown here, lung cancer comprises the number one, or in some cases, number two and number three main cause of cancer-related deaths. Why is this notable for Asian American females in particular is because we also know from population level risk factor data that in fact, Asian American females are, have a very, very low prevalence of smoking. Next slide, please. And so we know, um, I think, hopefully preaching to the choir here that the Asian American Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander population is an incredibly diverse population. Um, this collective population um, in, within the US comprises uh, persons from more than 50 different countries spoke, speaking more than 100 different languages or dialects. We also know from data that we've published that lung cancer incidence varies widely across these groups. Um, in select case series data, so this means data among persons diagnosed with lung cancer, we've also noted from the literature that more than 50% of lung cancer cases in Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander females are never smokers. This is incredibly high because if we contrast it to the proportion that we see among U.S. females, that proportion is much lower, 15%. And until recently, until the research that we just recently published, we've actually had no sufficiently large data source to be able to document what the actual incidence rates of lung cancer is by detailed race, ethnicity, and smoking status. So that is to say, we've not our the data that we have 
to, for looking at cancer incidence data, cancer mortality data, and different racial ethnic groups in the US, because we don't have smoking information in those data sets, we haven't been able to truly understand what's the incidence rate or what's the burden of lung cancer by um, smoking status among Asian American females. Um, so to address this problem of the data availability, um, Iona, Dr. Chang and I led a study where we tried to use a multi-level integrative data approach. So because cancer registry data doesn't have smoking information, we went to rely, um, we, went, we went and looked instead within, within EHR data or electronic health records data. We worked with collaborators at two large healthcare systems. One is Sutter Health, which covers about a third of the Northern California population. And then the second is Kaiser Permanente in Hawaii. Um, Kaiser Permanente in Hawaii obviously is a much smaller healthcare system compa when compared to Sutter Health in Northern California, but they have a robust representation and number of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islanders. So it was an ideal healthcare system for us to partner with. The approach we took was to take data, EHR data from these two healthcare systems and pool them together, combine them together, from which we were able to derive what we call a cohort of over 2.2 million people. And so this is 2.2 million members of these two healthcare systems for whom we were able to derive um, the uh, data. Um, we then, the next step we took, as you can see here from this um, peach box in the bottom left, is then we then extracted, selected EHR data elements from the two different healthcare systems and harmonized them. So making sure that the coding is similar across the two systems. We focused in particular on extracting data covering socio-demographic factors, so um, race of, detailed race ethnicity, including um, patients who identify with multiple racial ethnic groups, as well as known and putative or suspected risk factors for lung cancer. And the multi-level aspect of our study was to try to understand, in addition to patient individual level factors, what's the role of the neighborhoods in which they live? Um, we know, for example, from studies in Asia, that the level of air pollution and how much traffic density, which generates air pollution, how close you are to the traffic, can make a big difference in terms of your exposure to these um, to particular matters. We also know from some of the research that we and others have done that the, the level of the neighborhood social class or socioeconomic status and a concept called ethnic enclave. So how, what's the proportion relatively of the recent immigrants um, in, in the particular neighborhood. But these factors at the neighborhood level or contextual level are also important. Next. We then took these two, this cohort of data and we linked them to the state cancer registries. Um, in all US states, cancer, there are state laws that mandates the collection of uh, cancer data. And so through linking to these state cancer registries, we're basically able to identify if, if these 2.2 million individuals have subsequently gone on to de develop lung cancer. We were able to, through this linkage, identify 7,274 patients who were subsequently diagnosed with lung cancer, of which 3,867 were among females. Um, also from the cancer registries, we were able to extract important clinical information. Next. And so what did we find? We found that among, when looking just among female lung cancer cases, that is um, among those diagnosed with lung cancer, that the proportion of smoking status, um, whether you're a never smoker or lung cancer among never smokers, LCINS, um, versus if you ever have smoked, varied quite dramatically across the different racial and ethnic groups. So for example, the lowest proportion we saw was 15% among Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders combined. Um, we also noted 50% of Asian Americans combined were never smokers. And it's, it's interesting to contrast this against the numbers that we see of smoking of never smokers among non-Hispanic whites, 21%, 14% among um, Black Americans, and 38% among Hispanic Americans. Next. But what's especially interesting here is if we look within the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander and Asian American populations, um, where we see 14 and 20% among Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander females with lung cancer, 
In contrast to, for example, look at Chinese, 79% were never smokers. Just wanna pause and reiterate that this is among females who've been diagnosed with lung cancer. Among Chinese, nearly 80% of them have no personal history of smoking. Next. We were then able to, because of our study design, calculate cancer incidence rates for the first time. Next. <clears throat> and so this is what we found. We found that when we compared to non-Hispanic white females for whom the age-adjusted incidence rate is around 10, 10.1, um, the incidence rate of lung cancer among all of our native Hawaiian Pacific Islander and Asian American groups are nearly 1.5 to two times higher when we compare them to non-Hispanic whites. Next. The notable exception is among Japanese American females for whom the incidence rates were fairly comparable to what we see among non-Hispanic whites and Hispanic women. We don't quite know what this is, why um, we see this pattern, this um, uh, difference among the Japanese American female population, but it's definitely worthwhile to, to look into this further. Um, so just in summary, what we found was that the incidence rates of lung cancer among females who've never smoked were highest among Asian American females. Um, among Chinese in particular, 22.8 cases per 100,000 and about 20 for other Asian American females. And again, the notable exception is among Japanese American females at 6.4. We also noticed slightly lower uh, lung cancer incidence rates among native Hawaiian Pacific Islander females, but still quite high at 17. The rate among non-Hispanic white females was 10 and among Hispanic females was 8.5. And so the incidence rates of lung cancer among never smokers was two times higher in most Asian American females when compared to non-Hispanic white female never smokers. Um, we are wrapping up work on this grant. Um, we're continuing to use the EHR or electronic health records data to look at, to conduct risk analysis, focusing on six exposure domains. Um, so our goal is to assess the extent to which these factors you see listed here contribute to lung cancer among never smoking Asian American females. And we have our colleague, Mindy Darawan, is um, conducting a supplemental analysis where she's applying a data mining or big data approach called the machine learning, um, specifically a method called iterative random forest to assess the joint contributions of multi-level factors to lung cancer and never smoker risk. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Chang at this point. Thank you, Scarlett. Um, so building upon this work in which we had document the incidence rates of lung cancer among never smoking Asian American and native Hawaiian Pacific Islander females um, that was based on using electronic health record information, what we realized was that we really needed to be able to have really detailed information about potential risk factors. Um, so with that, we had um, proposed a study which and was entitled Elucidating Lung Cancer Etiology Among Asian American Female Never Smokers um, that was funded by the National Institutes of Minority Health and Health Disparities. Um, we refer to this as our FAN study, so Female Asian Never Smoker Study, um, that is led by myself and Scarlett Lynn Gomez, as well as um, the multiple principal investigator, Moon Chen at UC Davis, along with Heather Wakely, our collaborator at Stanford. So we have a large study team working on our FAN study and at UCSF, this involves our field staff, those, so those on the ground who are involved in the recruitment um, and the interviewing of um, recruited study participants. Um, we have staff involved in epidemiology and biostatistics, um, as well as expertise in graphic design and visualization, both with help with in terms of recruitment materials, as well as the dissemination and the sharing of our results. And then also content expertise in terms of the various risk factors we'll be looking at, such as example, um, experience in terms of understanding air pollutant measures or lifestyle factors in the social environment. I'm at, at UC Davis, um, we brings our expertise in the genomic work, um, which will be led by Cliff Tepper and his lab. And then at Stanford, um, Heather Weekly provides our expertise in thoracic and clinical oncology. And we have um, a large community patient advisory committee um, that involves patient advocates as well as community members that really help guide us in terms of our outreach 
to the Asian American community, and also in terms of what we can do as well to help bring awareness in regards to lung cancer among Asian American um, females. Um, and, you know, many of us, you know, have personally been touched by cancer, um, and specifically for our study team, we really like to honor um, both Trish Hong and Cindy Ng. They were members of our patient advisory committee um, who passed this past winter with the progression of their disease. So the FUN study, um, the aims of the study are to identify the attributal risk of known, putative, and suspected multi-level risk factors over the life course. So we really wanted to be able to ascertain exposures from childhood to adulthood for lung cancer among Asian American females who never smoke. And we will be looking at um, three kind of major domains in terms of potential risk factors, in terms of looking at genetic ancestry, individual level exposures, so health behaviors, um, lifestyle factors, as well as contextual risk factors, including out indoor and outdoor ambient air pollution, as well as the social environment. And then with information um, in regards to genomics and lung tumors, we'll be characterizing their mutational landscape and identifying association with multi-level risk factors. So the study designed for our FAN study, it is a population-based case control study where we're aiming to recruit 600 lung cancer cases. So these are newly diagnosed cases within the past 12 months that are residents of the Greater Bay Area region. Um, and they are mostly identified through um, a process referred to as early ca case ascertainment from the Greater Bay Area Cancer Registry that encompasses nine, nine, nine Bay Area counties. And we're expecting um, roughly 300 Chinese American, 100 Filipino American, and 90 Vietnamese American lung cancer cases. We will be recruiting 600 match controls. So these are women without lung cancer that will have similar characteristics in regards to age and Asian ethnicity. Um, and our methods for recruitment of control will be based on our prior experience where we um, found that actually using a large variety of different methods um, such as directories, community outreach, um, working with health centers, religious centers, various online um, approaches and ethnic media can really help um, provide a um, kind of um, wide sociodemographic um, sample of controls matching to our case population. So what are we asking of our fan study participants? So for women with lung cancer, um, we are requesting them to complete a survey and this can be either administered um, with assistance by an interviewer, by phone, um, or self-administered online, or um, these um, participants can be sent a paper copy. We are asking for a saliva sample for which we will extract DNA and look at genetic ancestry. And then also authorization for us to access their tumor tissue so we can conduct genomic profiling. Um, for women without lung cancer, um, they will also complete um, a survey um, administered by similar means by phone, online, or paper, as well as provide a saliva sample. So the data that we'll collect um, in regards to our survey instruments, um, it will capture quite detailed information in regards to various socio-demographic factors, um, secondhand smoke exposure. So this is particularly asking questions across the lifetime as well as exposures to cooking oil fumes across the lifetime, diet questions, um, in particular in regards to charred meat, as well as ass assessing information about um, their medical history in regards to prior lungs diseases, for example, as well as the health behavior, family history of lung cancer, um, reproductive factors, body size measure, as well as asking questions to ascertain residential history information. Um, and using this residential history information, we can link to various um, resources for various um, geospatial and contextual data. So this will enable us to look at air pollution exposures, um, measures of traffic density, as well as the neighborhood social environment. So assessing what could be the possible influences about neighborhood socioeconomic st status, as well as ethnic enclaves. Um, and then as I mentioned, we'll be able to look at estimates of genetic ancestry with DNA information as well as tumor genomic profiles, which will undergo whole exome sequencing. So right now I'm gonna play for you um, a video that gives a really nice um, 
um, synopsis of our study of what's involved. The FAN study is a study of lung cancer in Asian women who have never smoked. In a recent study, researchers found that 57% of Asian American women diagnosed with lung cancer have never smoked. The FAN study will look at possible causes of lung cancer, including secondhand smoke, genetics, and cultural factors. We hope to enroll Asian women living in the San Francisco Bay Area both with and without lung cancer. You'll be asked to complete a survey that will take approximately 45 minutes. You can do this online, over the phone, or by mail. You will also be asked to collect a small saliva sample. This can be done in the privacy of your own home. To thank you for your time, you will receive compensation in gift cards. Please join us so that we can better understand and prevent lung cancer for future Asian American women. As we have been conducting this fan study um, in context of the COVID-19 pandemic, we recognize that it was really important to address the rise in anti-Asian racism and violence that had been experienced in our community. Um, this is something that is a personal matter for me as I shared my story in a Washington Post article this past February um, that also shared the story of others, um, including Bicha Ratnapati, um, who was violently attacked last year and lost his life. So this was interesting in terms of looking at data um, that was published by Dr. Wen. I apologize for the control panel that's kind of interrupting our slides today, um, who published a study that looking at Twitter data and found that after March 15, 2020, when the former President Trump tweets China virus, there was observed to be a dramatic increase in the number of anti-Asian Twitter hashtags under the hashtag Chinese virus, think hashtag COVID-19. And you can see that depicted in this graph with this really large increase in the number of anti-Asian hashtags under hashtag Chinese virus that occurred after this March 15th date. So we recognize that this national rhetoric and racism have consequences. And there's been a large effort that's been undertaken by the Stop AAPI hate group um, who's been tracking this information. And just in their most recent report, this past November 18th, 2021, that they had documented from um, March 19, 2020 till this past September, that there have been over 10,000 hate incidents against Asian American and Pacific Islander people. And in regards to the type of discrimination experienced, 63% of that was verbal harassment, 16% shunning, 16% physical assaults, and 11% civil rights violations. And the trends that were observed in these hate acts against Asian Americans include that 31% of these incidents occurred in public streets, 27% in businesses, and 62% of these hate, hate reports were made by women, with 10% of the incidents reported among youth, and then 7% among seniors. And looking at the distribution across ethnic groups, Chinese Americans reported the most hate incidents with 43% of all ethnic groups, followed by Koreans at 16%, Philippine X at nine, Japanese at 8%, and Vietnamese at 8%. Um, and this national survey revealed that actually one in five experienced a hate incidents this past year. 
So for our fan study, we really wanted to recognize and understand you know, the various impacts of the COVID-19 among Asian American women. Um, given the fact that cancer patients have a greater burden of COVID-19 and COVID-19 symptom severity, hospitalization and mortality are highest among lung cancer patients relative to other cancer sites. And in San Francisco um, in May um, 2020, Asian Americans accounted for 14% of the COVID-19 cases but only represented 51% of the COVID, yet yeah, represented 51% of the COVID-19 associated deaths. And we know that cancer patients may have social, mental health, and economic impacts due to disruptions in care, um, worry and psychosocial stress, impacts due to possible job or home exposure, and greater economic impacts due to the cost of medical care. And as I just shared with you, um, the rise that has been amplified with the COVID-19 in regards to racial discrimination and xenophobia may further impact the negative well-being among Asian Americans. So we were fortunate to receive funding to conduct a COVID study amongst our parent fan study with the aims of comparing the social, mental health and economic impacts of COVID-19 among Asian American female never smokers who are newly diagnosed with lung cancer relative to those without lung cancer. And here we will assess the prevalence of experiences of discrimination, xenophobia, racial bias, and its impact on social, mental, and economic well being among Asian American female lung cancer cases and controls. So we will be um, and have been administering a survey that will capture information in regards to COVID 19 diagnosis. So information on symptoms, infection, hospitalizations, and vaccination. Um, their experiences with disruption in medical and cancer care. So concerns about the impact on the health um, as well as cancer for those diagnosed with the disease, um, delays or disruptions to diagnostic testing and treatments, um, experiences with telehealth um, issues in regards to internet access and you know, what are some of the barriers or concerns regarding um, telehealth. Um, also, we will be assessing um, information in regards to discrimination and xenophobia, and then assessing um, potential social and economic impacts, such as capturing information in regards to the experiences of stress due to social distancing, coping behaviors, and mental well being, as well as we'll capture information on patient reported outcomes. So, in regards to overall health related quality of life, um, medicals, um, appointments, um, information. And so we would like to um, end in regards to um, asking everyone to get engaged. So to spread the word about lung cancer risk in Asian American, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander females, um, to share word about our fan study and I've provided um, the website link there. And things we know that we can do to reduce risk. So avoiding smoking, avoid secondhand smoke, avoid cooking oil fumes, and then to advocate for more NI research in Asian American and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander populations. The last estimate that was provided that less than 1% of NI research focused on Asian American, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander females. And then we provide here um, a QRC code to um, learn more information. And so now we'll open up to the question and answers. So really thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Chang, Dr. Gomez. Thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for your work in uh, expanding the knowledge of health uh, in Asian Americans. And uh, thank you for your study. We're eagerly awaiting the results. I wish we had the results now. <laughs> so we had, uh, just a reminder to the audience, we have a Q&A session now. If you could, there are already several questions in the chat and Q&A. If you, ideally, if the audience could put the questions in the Q&A, it makes it a little easier to manage. Uh, but I will start with a couple of the questions uh, from one of our audience. Uh, the question was, I'd like to know how you were able to capture such a granular level of disaggregated data of Asian subgroups for your study population. As, as the audience may not know, a lot of times Asians are lumped together as one monolithic group and not disaggregated. How did you get this dis disaggregated data? 
I'd be happy to answer that. And then certainly um, Ioma and Heather can please chime in. And so in fact, the first study that um, we presented on, which was using that multi-level data integrative approach, um, one of the biggest reasons why we collaborated with Sutter Health and with Kaiser Permanente Hawaii was because within their healthcare systems, they had been for quite some time collecting that level of granular data. Um, in fact, we what you saw there was months and months of work by our study team to review dozens of codes of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander groups and combinations of those groups. Um, and so because of these data that have been collected through these two healthcare systems since the 90s, we really were able to leverage that really rich information to be able to understand these patterns. Um, we actually had um, explored participating with other healthcare systems and they just simply didn't have that level of granularity in the data. And a key goal of our study was to be able to look at the segregated Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander ethnic groups. That's well, fantastic. Uh, there were a group of people who were forward thinking enough to disaggregate their data. Um, yeah, I would, I, I'll editorialize a little bit there and, and uh, you know, encourage anyone who has the ability to uh, also enact this in other places for their data, that would be very extraordinarily helpful. Uh, next question uh, is, is there data on whether the spouses of women with lung cancer smoked? Is there data on spousal uh, smoking? Do you want to answer that, Ayona, or do you want me to take that one? Sure. So we, you know, we, there have been studies and largely the information that we know so far about lung cancer among Asian, Asian women who never smoke actually occur from Asia. So that's the information we've gained where they capture that information where we've identified, I think we all are well aware of um, secondhand smoke um, being a risk factor for lung cancer. Um, and that is collected through information in terms of asking about um, spouses information about their smoking practices. And similarly, we'll be collecting that information here. I think what's really unique about our study is that it's going to be the first study among Asian American women here in the US, because, you know, if we think about what we know about the risk factors for lung cancer of this population, um, we think about air pollution, we think about cooking oil fumes, we think about second uh, smoke. And the prevalence of that is larger in Asian countries than here in the US, but we still recognize their importance and we need to be able to really understand what their role is occurring for Asian Americans here in the US. Great, yeah, you mentioned data from, from Asia. Uh, the next question is about do never smoker women in China and also you mentioned that uh, Japanese American seems to Japanese American women seem to have a lower incidence. Um, but what's the comparison between never smoker women in China versus uh, similar women in Japan, as opposed to in America? Do we have data on that? I can jump in on that one. Um, so I, I got the easy job. I didn't have to put the slides together. Uh, those were <laughs> fantastic presentations <laughs> by my colleagues. Um, so actually, it's interesting. If you look in um, Far Eastern Asia, uh, especially there's data primarily from Japan and Korea and not as much that's come out of China. Um, but the rates in all three of those countries for women with lung cancer, it's closer to 50, 60 percent have never smoked. Um, and that number is actually, if you look in India, so not quite as far Eastern, it's less. Um, the percentage of women who um, have smoked is actually not quite as low. Um, and then when you get to Europe and in the US, it's a bit of a mix. So that gets us really interested in what might be the predisposing factors. Is there something that's genetic? Um, there are actually also higher rates in um, the Latinx population than in a, a, a purely Caucasian population. Um, so that's one of the other things we're really interested in the study. We know that some of this is related to exposures of some sort, but there's likely also some predisposition. And you can see that from migration patterns of long ago. Um, that's one of the things we're really excited to look at in the in the study. Um, but uh, to answer the question in a shorter version, um, the rates that uh, we uh, reported in, in the paper that was uh, presented there um, by Scarlett is, um, is different. Uh, so the outlier of, of Japanese Americans is not what's seen in, in Japan, um, where most of the women getting lung cancer don't have a history of smoking. Fantastic. I'm going to add my own question here. Do you think you'll have enough power in the study 
to look at immigrant versus non 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 immigrant Asian Americans, kind of getting to that connection to, you know, is there a difference between Asians in Asia, Asians in America, are there differences in second generation or further Asian Americans versus yeah. immigrants? I think that to the extent that the vast, depending on which ethnic group you're looking at, if you're looking at Chinese, for example, or Filipinos or Vietnamese, especially, the vast majority of Asian Americans within those groups here in the US are foreign born. And so our power likely will start to get limited when we start to make that kind of comparison. Um, Japanese Americans, on the other hand, it's almost flipped where the vast majority are US born and we actually see um, pretty decent numbers of subsequent subsequent U.S. born generations among the Japanese. Um, I think what we'll need um, are creative statistical approaches. We don't like to aggregate, but maybe there's a meaningful a statistical way to aggregate across similar, for example, Asian American ethnic groups to be able to tease apart that question, that that effect of, you know, um, timing of immigration, generational status on lung cancer risk. But um, to the point that Iona made, um, this, this is the first study <laughs> looking at lung cancer among um, Asian American females who've never smoked. Um, so, but first study in the US. So, so we think we'll still be able to contribute some um, interesting findings, um, but we're certainly, you know, there'll be certain exposures we won't be powered to be able to look at. But we hope that we'll be able to, you know, garner further funding to be able to expand the study. That would be the goal. Great, fantastic. Uh, another question about exposures. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase the question a little bit. Uh, is there a difference between maybe early exposure versus later exposure? Will your study be able to capture kind of timing of exposures, or potential risk factors? So our study is definitely, um, in terms of the data we're collecting, um, trying to capture the timing of exposure. So this was what Ioma referred to when she was describing the FAN study as a life course. So things that happened earlier in life and whether that exposure has persisted um, uh, you know, uh, uh, over the lifespan. Um, I'll let maybe Heather speak to whether the studies in Asia have been able to you know, elucidate any um, insights regarding whether an exposure took place to earlier life or later in life, but we, we do know for cancer in general that there is a long latency of the, the carcinogenic process is quite long. Um, so I think for many cancers, we know that early life exposures are, are really important. I don't believe I've seen any data that was able to tease out the timing of those exposures. That's a really Good question, um, but a difficult one to answer because there, are, if you think about all the different exposures one can have in life, and then you try to find cohorts of people where they only had exposure early in life versus later in life, it's it's very difficult. I think the the best we probably have is with smoke, smoking exposures, where you could have people who grew up in a smoke-free uh, environment and then either became smokers or grew up in a smoke-free environment and then lived with someone who smoked or vice versa. Um, but even there, it's been very difficult to, to really understand that. Another question related to uh, exposures regarding cooking fumes, is there more risk from the cooking oil or maybe natural gas exposure? But is there data on this? Um, a lot of the cooking fume data has come out of Asia and it's with the really, really high temperatures and the aerosolized fumes, but I, I don't know that they've teased out um, the specifics to answer that question. I don't know if um, Scarlett or Iona, if you know more about that. My understanding is, and this is um, um, common practice in many East Asian cooking is, um, you know, waiting till your wok gets very, very hot, like smoking hot, and then you add the oil. Um, and so it's really from that smoking oil in combination with perhaps um, less optimal ventilation systems, um, especially in parts of uh, China, for example, northern parts of China, where it's um, the temperature is cold, you know, there may not be as much indoor ventilation. And so um, the, the research that I've seen is referring to that particular cultural practice of, of cooking. Right. So something that we're interested in um, here among, you know, we don't know that's, you know, part of the, 
rationale for our study is a lot of these risk factors that have been identified through studies in Asia um, are, as Heather pointed out, very um, quite extreme exposures. You know, the levels of air pollution that are associated with lung cancer. We know Asia has some parts of urban Asia have very high levels of air pollution. Tuberculosis has been prior infection with TB has been shown to be um, a risk factor. Um, but using coal as a, as a heating element, especially again, in the absence of um, proper vento indoor ventilation is also a risk factor. Many of these risk factors are not as prevalent here among in the US. And so we don't know to what extent they may be relevant here among Asian American women um, and whether other risk factors are at play. Um, but we do know, for example, with regards to cooking oil fumes that a large proportion of Asian Americans work in the restaurant industry. And so perhaps that could be a potential source of exposure for that particular cooking oil fume exposure. I'm gonna combine the next two questions. They're around family history and genetics. Is there, I know, you know, a lot of, well, the, the non-smoker lung cancers have EGFR mutations, which my understanding, there are, those are tend to, those are acquired mutations, uh, not inherited mutations, is that correct? And then what is the, then the, is the genetic component, you mentioned maybe there's a genetic component. Is there a hypothesis there? Is there, you know, other associated disease with family history, such as breast cancer and other types of cancer? Sorry, I tried to combine questions to make it <laughs> a little easier. No, that was that was great. And I think that's the one of the most important aspects. Again, I'm the medical oncologist, so looking at it from that, but there are a lot of other determinants. But um, from that um, genetic risk factor, there have been many groups trying to understand what might be the sort of um, th those risks. So there have been um, many groups looking at many, many different genes and, and variations in those genes across large populations. But there hasn't really been a consensus. Um, different groups have come up with different answers. And so that's been um, one of the things that's been challenging. Um, what I'm, there are many aspects of this trial I'm very excited about, about the FAN study. Uh, I think Scarlett, you and I first talking about doing something like this 20 years ago. <laughs> um, but uh, so it's really exciting to see it up and, and running. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, this having a match group where we can look at what's different um, between the women who get cancer and the women who don't, who otherwise are matched, um, because we are going to be doing the saliva sample that's going to allow us to look at what what might be in the in the germline that that's different between the groups if there is something, um, because as um, Brent you pointed out, when we actually find people who have a cancer the aspects about the lung cancer itself, that EGFR mutation, um, or there, there are multiple others that we see more often in people who get lung cancer who haven't smoked, those are mutations that are just in the cancer and they're not in the person. And so that's what's made it really tricky. There are very rare families that have a, a germline, so in, in them passed on mutation in EGFR, but that's incredibly rare. And so for the others, we just don't know. And that's why this study, one of the reasons it's so important to help us understand that. Great, excellent, uh, excellent answer to a complicated question. Um, uh, great question, next, next uh, audience member has a great question about social determinants of health. Or is, is there a relationship between social determinants of health and lung cancer incidents, especially of course, never smoker lung cancer incidents? Um, we and others have done some studies um, using cancer registry data to look at associations, for example, between um, a measure of socioeconomic status at a neighborhood level, um, which is kind of the extent to which we're able to measure social determinants of health within these larger registry data sets. Um, and yes, there is um, an association between that particular measure of neighborhood socioeconomic status and lung cancer incidence. But what's really interesting is that it actually varies depending on which racial, ethnic, and gender group you're talking about, and even by um, nativity, US born versus foreign born. So there's not really one straightforward answer to that question, except that it is associated, um, but it seems to vary. I think for the most part, for most groups, um, if I recall, um, we see higher incidence rates with lower 
socioeconomic status, and likely that's tied very strongly to tobacco smoking. So we know that lower socioeconomic populations have higher prevalence of smoking. There's okay. been no studies on never smoker lung cancers. Okay, great, great. Um, not good that we don't have this data, great answer. Um, uh, the next question, when did you first notice, when did this, when, when, when was this uh, finding discovered that Asian uh, women uh, have a higher percent, uh, high incidence of non-smoking lung cancer? Was this known for a while? Was it 20 years ago? Um, when was this discovered? I will chime in here and say that 20 years ago, Heather approached us um, to say, you guys run a cancer registry. I've been seeing this phenomenon, this pattern in my clinic, and I, I and my other colleagues, like, you know, tell, tell us what's going on, use your data. And we're like, we don't have smoking information. Um, um, and so over the course of almost 20 years, we've been publishing and publishing as much as we can using other data sets. But as Heather mentioned, this is actually our first effort. It's been a long, long time coming. Um, our first effort to really get the actual data to be able to address this question. Um, specifically, that's why I started out um, early on saying that this has been a long topic of great interest um, to us. Yeah. Cool. There is um, some data that um, from Taiwan um, where they have uh, better data on the smoking. Um, where they were able to show that those smoking rates have been coming down, the rates of the adenocarcinoma type of lung cancer, which is it's associated in people who have never spoke to get it, has been going up. And that's actually there. It's in both men and women. Um, here, you know, it's we're seeing it a bit more in women. Um, and it's a little hard to tease out because our smoking data is still very difficult to to directly link with the registries for the most part. Um, but that's one of the really important questions. Again, we're trying to figure out why, and we have been seeing it. And it's been really the past two to three decades, and it's just been going up, and we don't know why. That leads to the next question uh, really nicely. Do non-smoking Asian men have a higher lung cancer rate? Ayala, do you want to answer that question? We actually did look at this in our data. We just focused on presenting the results for women. Um, actually, Scott, so I'm not sure if I can recall the specifics by this different ethnic, racial ethnic groups um, within our study. I don't think that they were particularly notably higher than that seen for non-Hispanic whites within our, in comparison. But it sounds like, uh, Heather, you're saying, Dr. Wakeley, you're saying that there's differences found in Taiwan, potentially in men, among men? Uh, yes. So um, the rates for both men and women are going up with this adenocarcinoma and down with the squamous cell, which is more associated with smoking. Um, the rates in women are higher. Now, um, when we talk about in, uh, especially um, in parts of Far East Asia, like we talked about in Taiwan being part of that, um, this EGFR mutation, which is found in lung cancers very frequently in people who have never smoked who get lung cancer, um, that's particularly pre prevalent there. Um, one of the things we're going to be looking at in this study too is, is about EGFR and whether that varies much by, um, by the different um, Asian ethnic groups. Um, we do know that uh, the EGFR mutant mutation in lung cancer, which is it's not something that's present in the person, it's only present in the tumor. So it's something that develops over the course of their life. Um, that can be found in people of all different ethnic backgrounds, um, but it's just more prevalent. And it's one of the few lung cancer mutations that's more common in women versus men. Um, so a lot of our other mutations that we find in, in lung cancer, even in people who have never smoked, it's pretty balanced for men and women, but EGFR is more common in women. It's also more common in Asian women. And so that might be one of the links that we're going to be studying, but it itself is not mutated um, in the germline of people other than the very, very rare exception. So it's not a simple story to figure it out. Our next question is about screening. So I'm going to generalize this question. Do we have screening criteria? Who should be screened? What are the modalities of screening? Get this question a lot. You know, I, I know somebody 
has lung cancer, never smoked, suddenly they had an x-ray and it was discovered, or they went to the emergency room and, you know, they had advanced disease. Let's, uh, please let us know about screening. What's the data? Is there screening? Does it exist? What, what should we do? You guys are looking at me for that one. Yes, we are looking at you, Heather. <laughs> um, so uh, in the U.S. right now, the only screening guidelines are related to smoking history. Um, and so when we're talking about lung cancer developing in people who do not have a smoking history, so far there are no guidelines for screening. Um, there was a big study uh, that was presented uh, again out of Taiwan. Uh, like my last trip to Asia was Taiwan uh, right before the pandemic started. So it was a great conference, lots of discussion on this topic. Um, and they presented a big screening trial in people who had never smoked um, and trying to understand some of those risk factors. Again, still lots of questions. That's why we're doing our trial. Um, and our trial is much broader because it's many different groups. Um, they also did a big study on screening, and for that trial, you had to have certain risk factors, most of them family history, and they did show a significant um, improvement in finding the cancers at early stage where we can have a higher chance of cure through surgery. Um, and now there's a lot of work being done in trying to figure out how do we then replicate that into other communities, um, like in the US. Um, so there has, is a study that is being started in uh, New York um, with some partnership from the NIH and others interested in something that there's a growing interest in, in doing. The challenge we have is that even where there's very strong data that screening can improve mortality, and that's in people who have a heavy smoking history, we don't have much screening being done, even though that's now a standard guideline. And so there's a lot of focus on trying to get screening done where we know it makes a huge difference and a lot of growing effort in trying to do the studies to understand how can we screen so that we find people who you wouldn't expect to be at risk other than perhaps by family history, people who don't have that smoking history, the group we're talking about. Um, so we'd really love to know more, but we don't yet. And when you talk about screening by doing scans, CT scans, there's some health risk to that. And so there's some caution. So we have a lot more we need to explore and learn about with screening, but that's a really, a really critical question. Great, so, so stay tuned, definitely. Yeah. We'll get more and more data uh, from uh, great researchers such as uh, the three of you uh, to, to help us with this. Um, and one more question about barriers to care. I know uh, Dr. Chang had talked about COVID and anti-Asian racism. Uh, you know, anecdotally, anecdotally, we've seen, especially patients who don't speak English well, uh, may have had increased barriers to care. Do you think, or do you have data behind uh, the incidence of diagnosis of lung cancer over these past two years? Has it dropped or getting, are people getting diagnosed at a later stage? Do we have any data or will your study, you know, be able to elucidate that, the impact of COVID on diagnosis and, and stage of disease? So I think that's a really good question. I think, um, you know, as we can utilize information from the cancer registry um, and as that data comes out, we'll be able to answer that question specifically, looking to see if there may perhaps um, that you would hypothesize if there would be any stage shift in terms of the presentation of lung cancer diagnosis that would be affected by the pandemic. So we don't have that data quite at hand yet, but definitely that's something that we will be looking into. Fantastic. Uh, my favorite question of the night. You mentioned about charred meat specifically. Would regular Chinese barbecue fall into that category? That's important for me because I love, I love my tasu bao. I love my, I love my barbecued meats. Uh, does that fall into the? Is that a risk factor? Do we know? <laughs> Well, I, I think, think we know. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the you know the you know the tasty bits. You know, when you barbecue and you have that black charred meat. You know, we know the best that, part. The right the, next to yeah, the fat. Yeah, those black charred <laughs> meats. You know, there definitely have been studies to show you know the potential, um, you know, relationships and associations with cancer risk. So I think that's you know where our concerns are. The, you know, is you know those burnt crispy bits. <laughs> 
Well, thank you. Thank really great. Thanks to the three of you for joining us and presenting your work and study. I just want to close maybe with uh, uh, if you could just remind us about what the website that the, our audience can go to if they want to learn more about the study. So there were actually two websites um, that I in IAMA's last slide. Our study website, which we would love for folks to um, visit, is FANS Study, F A N S S T U D Y, so FANS Study, one word, dot UCSF.edu. Um, the QR code that IAMA put up in her last slide actually links you to a current. Um, at a National Cancer Institute website in which they're soliciting feedback from anybody, general public, researchers, patients, advocates, on um, our thoughts and opinions about what NIH, NCI should be doing about research among Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islanders. So I think they're listening. I think this is a great opportunity for us as a community to speak up and tell them our thoughts and feelings about what where we feel they should be funding. Great. And just to, again, correct me if I'm wrong, you are also accepting people who are matched controls, meaning yes. they don't have to have lung cancer. So yes. for our audience yes. out there, you can see whether you qualify, even if you don't have lung cancer, they're not just enrolling people with uh, potential participants with lung cancer. So please uh, check out the website. And uh, thank you, Dr. Cheng, Dr. Gomez, Dr. Wakely, for an enlightening evening. Uh, thank you for our audience. And again, great thanks for the uh, to the Stanford Health Library, the Center of Asian Health Research and Education, and the Vincent Wu Foundation for supporting this series. We'll see you in the end of March for a talk by Dr. Sun Kim on type 2 diabetes in Asian Americans. Please join us then. Thank you. Thank you.